Hello, hello, and hello. Happy Tuesday. It kind of feels like a Monday because I think a lot of people had yesterday off, but happy Tuesday. We are here live on my channel to talk about Netflix's new reality show coming called The Perfect Match. It's coming on Valentine's Day, which is honestly feel like feels like a great day to come for this show. That's all about love, right? It's all about love. It's all about love. Let me sip some coffee. Well, welcome back to my channel. We are live today to talk about the perfect match. I love going live on YouTube because it's so much easier where I don't need to edit anything. But the only issue with going live is I can't really like show pictures of people and stuff. I mean, there's like a way to do that, but I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but this show seems like it's going to be a train wreck. Like it's going to be really exciting. I heard about this a really long time ago, so I've been really anxiously awaiting, but now that it's like out, I'm so excited to start talking about it and to check it out because I promise you guys, these people are here to play. Like they're here to make good TV and I promise you they're going to do that. Um, we have former reality stars from all different types of shows. Love is Blind, The Ultimatum, Too Hot to Handle, The Mole, Selling Tampa, and The Circle, The Circle France. So there's people from everywhere. And I mean, it's going to be exciting. I think there's already like some people giving them backlash because it's like, why are we seeing these people again? Like, are they really going to find love? Probably not. I mean, maybe there'll be like one couple that comes out of this, maybe two. Um, but I think it's going to be a really good show regardless, because these are some really interesting characters and some really fun names. So let's go over the concept of the show. And then, um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of some teases on what you can expect. So it says on variety. So variety dropped the news that Netflix and kinetic content. So kinetic, I know does like love is blind. They also do the ultimatum. They're doing a reality show called the perfect match. So I actually think they've done this show in Japan. I just looked it up. Um, so they might have done this show in other, overseas in other countries, but it's going to unite some of some of the streaming services, which is Netflix, most famous singles as they look for love in a tropical paradise. So I believe the show was filmed in Panama and I believe it was filmed about eight months ago. So already people are like, why are so many people in relationships now? Because I know Francesca has been posting someone that she's been dating and a few other people have as well. So we'll get into that in a second. But I think that there's just different rules because these are reality stars who are public figures. So I think that if Netflix really wanted all of these people to get together, the contracts are probably a little bit different than the contracts for other people who are going on the show for the first time. Because think about the love is blind couples that have to hide their relationships for a year, a year and a half. Like they literally get married like Alexa and Brennan and they can't even say anything. So there's definitely different contracts and different rules with these returning reality stars. So they are competing to form relationships. The most compatible couples will play matchmaker, breaking up other couples and sending them on dates with brand new singles. They'll invite to the villa. The official description reads, will they create better matches or will they create chaos? Both. Um, in this over-the-top journey of strategy and dating hosted by Nick Lachey. Oh no. We have Nick. Is it, it says Nick Lachey as in like just Nick, not Nick and Vanessa. I mean, I get why Netflix wants to, we need someone new. I get why Netflix wants to kind of keep the familiar face. Um, but I would have preferred someone else. Um, only one couple will be crowned the perfect match. Yes. So, um, wait, let me finish this and then I'm going to talk about it. The season consists of 12 hour long episodes. Okay. That is amazing. 12 episodes is good. I do think there will be a reunion. Um, there is no reunion confirmed yet in this article, but I do think there's going to be one, which will probably get shot in the next month. Um, this show will stream over three weeks with four episodes released on February 14th, four dropping on February 21st and the final four coming out February 28th. I love that. I love when Netflix does that because I think it's really good to be able to like um, talk, like interact with everyone online who also wants to like talk about the show and stuff. So I like how they gave us enough episodes to binge, but then they don't make us wait too long for the finale. So I'm totally here for this. And 
Um, I just said something really interesting. Oh yeah. So there's going to be a couple that wins at the end. So how it's going to work, um, since I'm giving you guys a little bit of teases and I want to read your comments and then we're going to go over the cast. Um, how it's going to work is that there's going to be a jury. So at the end, everyone who was eliminated, and I don't know if it's like everyone that was eliminated because some people are going to go, go home early. So you'll probably see a couple people eliminated in the first two episodes. Um, but so I don't know if those people will be involved in like the jury. Um, but the ending of the, the last, like however many people or the whole people, they're going to vote for a couple to win. And I believe that there are going to be three couples in the finals. So it's really about making friendships in a way and building alliances because I think there's going to be a cash prize too. It doesn't say anything about this in the article, but there's got to be some reward for winning other than bragging rights. So I'm assuming there's going to be a cash prize, but there's going to be people who win. Um, hi, Bittersweet Coffee. That's annoying. Not a fan of him. You're not a fan of Nick. We'll go over the cast. So I think this is going to be really exciting. Like I said earlier, these people came to play. So a lot of these people have been on other shows. They're interesting. They're funny. There's obviously some people that were villains. So, you know, we all love to hate sometimes on reality TV. So I think fans are really going to enjoy it. And it's going to be like, let me take another sip. <laughs> It's kind of going to be like Bachelor in Paradise meets Love Island, where new contestants will come in each week. So there will be like an original cast, but then new people will come in and everyone's going to have to couple off. But then when the new people come in, then the people who already are coupled, they're going to have the option of staying with the person they're already coupled with or switching out with someone new. And then if they switch out with someone new, then that person who was already coupled can either find someone else, I think, or they're going to have to, or they're going to get eliminated. And they're all going to be staying in different like villas. So they'll be like, if you, if you pick someone that you're in a couple with, you're going to be in a villa. Um, we're about to go over the cast list, but Kathleen says, is this just straight couples or any LGBTQ couples? So it is going to be all straight couples, except there's going to be one girl, girl couple um, for some of the show. I'm not going to reveal who, because like I said, I don't want to do any spoilers. I'm just going to give all the teases, but there is going to be a little bit of girl, girl action on the show. So that is going to be really, really exciting. And I think you guys are going to freak out over it. So let's go over the cast list and see who we got on there. And then if anything else comes to mind, um, definitely leave them in the comments. If you are live, I know a lot of people watch these after, so feel free to also comment down below, even if you missed the live, but we have Abby from 20 somethings. I don't know if you guys remember Abby. She was on 20 somethings, which was the show in Austin, Texas, where they all lived in a house. If you guys haven't watched 20 somethings, definitely watch it. I don't think it got renewed for a second season. I actually think it should, um, even if they like do a new cast and like refresh it, but Abby is going to be on it. And then another guy from the show was supposed to be on this show. I forgot his name. I think it was Adam with the long hair. He was also from 20 somethings, but he ended up getting um cut in casting so he didn't make it on to this show um then we have ann sophie from selling tampa which i haven't watched the two shows i haven't watched are selling tampa and the mole um which i think i need to check out both of them um but i think it's kind of fun to watch these shows when you kind of know everybody but then you don't know everyone so then there's like a few new people so that's kind of exciting for me um, Bartise is on this from Love is Blind, which I can't believe they're bringing Bartise back, right? So they filmed Love is Blind season three, right? Before they even filmed this show. But they, but Bartise filmed this show before Love is Blind season three came out. So think about that. Bartise filmed two Netflix reality shows pretty much back to back. Um, Bittersweet Coffee says Bartise is only there for the clout. You know, honestly, guys, there's probably a lot of people on this cast who are only there for the clout and they're not there to date at all. But it's just the nature of the game. It's reality TV. Like, I know we want to find true love. This is not okay, this is not a show that you're going to see um, true love on. I don't think so. Like, you're not going to watch this show and be like, oh, my God, couple goals. They're going to get married and have babies. Like, this is more of like a sexy, like summer show where it's going to be like dating and like hooking up and like drama it's not going to be a show where like it's like love is blind and it's about like weddings or like the bachelor where they like really emphasize a love story that is not this show this is more of like a too hot to handle type of show where it's sexy it's on the beach think bikinis 
you know, it's, of course, people are coming on this show for clout and to gain followers. And, you know, Netflix is bringing on these people because they have followers and they'll bring more exposure to the show. It's just the nature of reality TV. So I don't think we can really like hate, hate on people for going on, you know, reality TV for that. It's just, it's part of it. Okay. Then we have Calvin Crooks, who was from The Circle. He was on season three. He got eliminated like halfway. Um, I don't think he's going to, to do too well on this show. But like I said, no spoilers. Um, Chip says, I'm excited to see if Bartise redeems himself. I don't think Bartise is going to redeem himself, but that is just a prediction. Um, I really don't think so. Um, then we have Chase from Too Hot to Handle. I love Chase. Um, I've met him a few times and I think he is so funny. Um, so I'm excited to see him on TV again. Do I think he's going to find love? No. Um, do I like to mess with him? Yes. So I'll probably be shading Chase a little bit, but it will all be in good love and good fun because I actually like Chase. Um, then we have Chloe. Now she was on Too Hot to Handle and The Circle. Um, I saw someone in my comments on TikTok be like, Chloe is on every show. Netflix loves Chloe. She's so entertaining. She has a British accent. She's beautiful. She's hot. She's down. Um, she is definitely, I don't know if she's like overexposed. Cause like, I feel like the audience of Netflix still can't get enough of Chloe. So I think it's going to be fun to see her. However, I will tease a little something about Chloe and we'll see what happens and we'll see what plays out. But I think she might maybe just maybe we'll see get a little bit of a villain edit this season. Just maybe you didn't hear from me. I'm not confirming that. We'll see what happens on the show. But I have a feeling she might get into some drama and might be talking to more than one person. Because let's also for remember, Mitchell is on this list as well. Mitchell, um, he is also from The Circle. Um, they had a little bit of a love connection season two, right? So I can assure you that that will play out in some way on this season, if you guys are interested in that love story. Um, everyone says they love Chloe. No, I love Chloe too. I think she's hilarious. If she gets a villain edit, then I might change my opinion on her based on the show, um, which I will never like, which is just based on a show. Like I don't mean these shows you can never take too seriously, guys. Like seriously, I know some of y'all Netflix fans are so passionate. I get it. But like, you can't take all these shows too seriously. Um, but yeah, Chloe might get a little bit of a villain edit. So we'll see what happens. But I can also assure you that she will get lots of camera time this season. Um, that's the tease. Then we have Colony Reeves from Selling Tampa, which you got, like I told you guys, I haven't seen that. So I don't know much about her or him. Oh my God. Now I need to Google Colony. I can't leave. I can't lose the wrong pronouns. Okay, Colony. Um, okay. Oh, she's beautiful. Stunning, smart. Definitely looking forward to getting to know her and a couple new people. Then we have Damien Powers. Oh my God. So Damien was from Love is Blind season one. He had the whole thing with Giannina. Um, oh my God. That was crazy. I, I'm sure they'll make reference to it or do a flashback maybe um, when they bring in Damien. But then if you guys remember, Damien also had a connection with Francesca, who was also on this cast. And Francesca, she showed up to the Love is Blind season one reunion and had the whole thing with Giannina. So, wow, that also will be talked about in some regards as well, probably in the beginning. Um, so that should be interesting. I feel like everyone took Giannina's side during Love is Blind season one, right? Okay, Megan says Colony is cool. Great. Um so interesting. Um, so Damien, I don't know how well he'll do on this show. Like as far as like the fans in the audience, I feel like he might get like a villain vibe. I can kind of see him as like an early eliminee as well. So we'll see what happens. But I can also see Francesca and Damien coupling up at least for like the first couple of rounds before new people come in just because they have a history and they have a past. And if you want to stay on the show longer, you, you know, you might want to couple up with someone you already know. Like, that's why I don't think we're going to get any, like, actual authentic love stories out of this. I could be wrong. We, I think we're going to get one, actually. But I don't think we're going to get many because a lot of these people actually know each other in real life and are in the Netflix family and have been on other shows. So I think there's going to be some drama that will be, like, played out. But I think that at the end of the day, a lot of this drama or, like, these relationships have already been, like, settled in real life, um, like, behind the cameras. So now they might just have to kind of 
play things out for the cameras. Um, I don't believe that any of these shows are 100% real. I think they're like literally like 50-50, um, especially with like producers and like editing and like the twists and turns and you're in those situations. So you never really know what you see is how it actually is. But either way, it's still so enjoyable to watch. I love Netflix reality shows and I really do think that this show is going to be a hit. Like I genuinely think it's going to like pop off. Um, then we have Diamond. Oh, did I, who did I miss? Okay. Um, Damien, then we have Diamond Jack from Love is Blind. I don't know who Diamond Jack is because this person, his Diamond was probably on season one, which I didn't really watch of Love is Blind. Um, or maybe season three. Let's see. Does anyone know in the comments? It says, after... More After more than two years since Love is Brian premiered, Diamond and Carlton are no longer together, but they're happily living their own lives. This was an update on December 5th, 2022. So I guess Diamond was from season one. Okay, I didn't want, I only watched the end of season one. You know, actually, what's really smart about Netflix is that they, is doing these cross promotions of shows actually helps because I didn't really know what Love is Blind was, but then when Francesca joined the Love is Blind after the altar, then I tuned in and then I saw the three part special or two part. And then I started watching love is blind for season two and three. So like, I think that's why they do things. And I think that if this show goes well, which it will, they need to do an all new cast next season for the perfect match season two. Um, next up we have Dom Gabriel, who's from the mole. I haven't seen the mole. Um, but I loved Traders on Peacock and people are saying it was it's similar to that. So I have a feeling that I would really like them all. So if you guys can let me know in the comments which season I should start at, if there's multiple seasons, I would love to watch them all. Then we have Francesca from Too Hot to Handle. Now she is, I believe, in a relationship. I follow her on social media. So like I said, this show was filmed months ago. So I don't think she'll address that because she's probably under contract. Um, but hopefully that answers your question that like, like we talked about, about some of these people possibly dating. And then, um, I also think that Francesca is going to get loads of screen time. I think she actually is the biggest name on this cast as far as like Netflix reality. So I think that she's going to get a lot of screen time. Um, and then we have Georgia who was or is dating Harry Jowsey. Isn't it crazy how Harry is not on this show? I wonder why Harry isn't on this show because he must have been asked right maybe they thought he was overplayed and he's been on too much stuff but then you also have francesca and chloe who've been on plenty of shows before as well so i guess this was filmed before harry and georgia started dating um unless they were dating when when she went i mean you you, you honestly can't guarantee that all these people went to the show single like seriously um but either way like i said good tv then we have Enos Tazi, which I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, this person, I have to like Google because I don't even know, is from The Circle France. Um, wait, I think I know who this is. Hold on. Let's see. Enos. E Ennis? Um, come on. I want to get off of this live already. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I'm having so much fun. Okay. She's beautiful. She's from the circle of France. Okay. Um, maybe they wanted Francesca more figured he wouldn't go on with her. Oh, maybe me, but I think it would have been really good if Harry did go on with Francesca because I feel like they would have drama, but maybe Francesca didn't want to film with Harry. And then I think they would want Francesca over Harry, but I feel like Harry and Francesca, it would have been such good TV. Okay. Then we have Joey Sasso who won the first season of the circle. So if Joey won the first season of The Circle, I don't want to see him win this show. But then again, this show is about love and The Circle was about competition. But we don't know if there's like a cash prize at the end, which I think there is, but it doesn't say that. So who knows how Joey will do. Um, then we have Carousel Snow from Sexy Beasts, which I did. I think I saw part of that show. I think that was the show where they like dress people up in like masks and like face paint and they couldn't see who they're dating. Um, have you guys ever seen Sexy Beasts? Um, it's a really weird concept. I don't think it ever got a season two. Then we have Lauren LC. Wait, I literally just met her. Like, Lauren LC. I just met her, like, a couple months ago. Oh, my God. Yeah, I literally just met her. She was really, really nice. Um, she was really sweet and cool. So I'm excited to see her. I feel like, I don't know who she will couple up with. Because I feel like she is so, like, 
poised, right? Like, she, I feel like she's classy. Not saying any of these other people aren't, because I don't know. But I feel like she's really classy. And some of these Netflix shows can get a little slimy, you know? Um, then we have Mitchell, who is such a kind, sweet doll. I believe he said that he was a virgin when he was on The Circle Season 2. So I'm sure that will come up again. But I think people are just excited to see his like where he stands with Chloe and how that all plays out. Then we have Nick, who is also from The Circle. I do not know how to say his last name. He was on The Circle season three. I remember thinking that like he was so close to winning, um, but he's been in the headlines recently because there has been speculation that he might be dating Katie Thurston from The Bachelorette. Um, I don't know if they're, I think they're definitely like talking. I mean, there was that picture of them kissing. I don't think they're like in an exclusive relationship. Um, but I definitely think they're like talking. Um, so I don't really know who Nick would date on this show. I'm trying to think I need to like do like a prediction about like, who's going to like couple up with who, um, then we have Savannah from the circle. I love Savannah. She is so beautiful and so pretty. I feel like she knows reality TV. Um, so I think that she is going to give us a good show as well. And Maybe I'll tease, like, there might be a little feud, I think, between Savannah and Francesca. Maybe a little back and forth. Maybe they might be going for the same guy. I don't know. That's just a prediction, and we'll see what happens. Um, then we have Shane from Love is Blind. I love Shane, and I also think he's really good TV. And I think that fans would want to see him again. Like, I think that fans were invested in him and his story. So I'm excited to see... A different side of Shane. And this is really interesting because if you were following the Love is Blind drama, there was a lot of back and forth when Natalie and Shane were having their breakup. It was playing out on social media. They both did podcasts and this show, you know, got leaked because I feel like, I don't know if, if Natalie was like maybe upset that he went to go film this show and I don't know the timeline while maybe they were still figuring it's a little murky while maybe they were still figuring things out. And then remember they got spotted when he possibly came back from the show. So there's going to be a lot here. I feel like with Shane, I do think he might pursue a relationship with maybe Chloe. I don't think Francesca, but also maybe Enos from the circle of France or Izzy. So I think Shane will be around for a while. I also think that Shane will get a lot of camera time. Um, Katie said she is single on your mom and dad podcast. Yeah, I actually saw Katie Thurston say that. But I think she also kind of like said that like they hung out. Um, that's why I said they weren't exclusive. Um, do you know when the next Love is Blindness season is coming out? I don't know when the next Love is Blindness season is coming out. If I had to guess, I would probably say August or September that that's just my prediction. Also, I don't know if they're going to do Love is Blind season three after the altar, but you know how Netflix is. They film things and then they wait eight months, sometimes a year before they put them out. And that what, then that is what frustrates Netflix fans because we get invested in these relationships and these people, we follow them on Instagram and then we keep up with their real lives. And then we have to go back in time. So I feel like Netflix needs to get a better turnaround. And I know that I've expressed this before on my TikTok, and I'm sure other fans have as well. I don't think that Netflix listens or cares. I don't know that. I could be wrong. But in my opinion, I just don't. I think Netflix just like has their way of doing things and it works. They get so many viewers. So hopefully they can listen to us. But I just I really don't think they care. Um, then we have Will Richardson, who is from The Mole, which I haven't seen. And then we had Zay from The Ultimatum. Um, he had the relationship with Ray on season one of The Ultimatum. And I know they're going to bring back The Ultimatum. They filmed the queer season of The Ultimatum, which will be the season two season. They're supposed to bring that back. That will probably come next in the Netflix reality lineup for the year. And then I think we'll get Selling Sunset soon too, which will be super exciting. And I know they're also filming Selling the OC. They're going to be filming Selling the OC right now. They're filming it, I believe, two seasons back to back. And then they should be they should have wrapped with Selling Sunset, but I think they're, they're, they're filming the second season back to back. But we'll probably get season six in like March, I would assume, because it was like a year later. So that's the cast of the show. It seems like we have 25 names. Um, 
I'm really excited about this show. I genuinely think it's going to be really, really good. I think it's going to be great TV. I think the drama, I think the love, I don't know how accurate it's going to be um, with where these people are at currently in their lives. So I guess just watch it for enjoyment. And I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen at the end, but it seems like there's going to be two people who win that are voted by some type of jury. I don't know if there'll be like challenges. I don't, it doesn't sound like there's going to be any challenges in this show. seems like it's going to be like more bachelor in paradise type style, or maybe they like go on dates. I think it's going to be hard for some of us to believe what's real and what's not, but we'll see. I think it'd be cool if they did challenges, but this just seems like a recipe for disaster. And I am really excited to watch it. And I will definitely be recapping it and talking about it once it comes out. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Leave your comments down below. Leave your predictions for this show. Like I said, I wasn't giving any spoilers away, but I was giving some teases. So let your friends know to watch this video if you need more clarification. And comment down below your thoughts. Give this video a thumbs up. And please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Thank you so much. And you guys can always keep up with me on my socials, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Everything is at Zachary Reality. And I will see you guys in the next live stream. So I'll see you later. Bye.